Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Leigh Ralston. I am also known as Mommy Lay, and I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. There might be some people that are going to be joining us too. I would love to know where everyone is from today. I am recording, not recording, I'm broadcasting actually live from Northwest Arkansas area, and it's a very beautiful day today. Um, although I know that there's a lot of things happening in the world, you know, very unfortunate events, but I'm so glad that you're joining me today because art is a great escape, you know, even for a little bit, so we can just tune in to something creative. So Thank you for being here with us again. So this um, class is also recorded. Um, if you are creating along with me today, or, or if not, you can, you know, just get a drink, grab a drink and watch the demo for today. But I would love it if you'd create with me today. Um, today's class is brought to you by Faber Castell and Michaels, and we, we will be working with some Faber Castell gelatos. So, oh, snowy Pennsylvania, that's, ooh, that's cold. We have friends from North Carolina, Chicago. Hello, um, not so far, nine hours. I love going to Chicago. Maryland, so Illinois too, but hello everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna head over and move to the overhead camera so we can get this fun class started. Christina is from Texas. Michaela's asking if she can use some paint today. Of course, whatever you would like, but I would I hope that this class will inspire you to pick up some gelatos from your local Michaels or your online store. So Meredith is from Arlington. Hello, Meredith. Hi, Mary. Oh, yay. Thanks, Mary. I'm sorry, but I got canceled, but I'm glad that you're here. Okay. Well, like what I was saying earlier. We are going to be playing with some gelatos. Um, I, I cannot stop talking about gelatos all over my social media just because they're super fun. So these are not ice cream. <laughs> and no, they're not lipstick either, but they use the same uh, mechanism, you know? So you can do this and then do that. So these are creamy pigment sticks that are water soluble. So there's many different ways that you can work with gelatos. And I actually want to work on a little bit just so we can really see how they work. All right. So I'm sure that some of you here um, join me in our past classes and, you know, we worked with some gelatos. I would normally use gelatos in really everything. I would use it in my planner. I would use it in my journals. I would use it as a backdrop, a background to create some gradients. I would use it to color, kind of like watercolors. You can also create some beautiful textures using this. But of course, that depends on what kind of material or surface that you're working on. Um, but you can color and apply directly like, you know, crayons like this. You can smudge them, like working with some creamy, pastels. Look at that. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. So I love using them to create some background, some gradients, just because they're so fun. You can also dip your water in, uh, dip your finger, <laughs> dip your finger in a little bit of water and like this. So, and then create more like very soft backgrounds like this. Or you could just apply that because look at that. Of course, when you use water, you're, you're pulling out a little bit of that pigment. So you'll get a little more softer look. But if you want more saturation and more opaque colors, I would really like, um, would really suggest applying it directly into your surface. Um, but also, it depends on the paper you're using, the type of journal and the type of surface that you're using. I would normally prep my my surface first like for example the canvas that I'll be using today I would prep that with some gesso but the journal that I'm using is has a very soft smooth surface and that's so when I apply the gelatos it doesn't really leave that streak you know I can lift the color smudge it and really create some beautiful beautiful blending in there all right. Okay. So, oh, Amy is here. Hi, Amy. Yes. Happy International Women's Day. 
That is so true. We celebrate you and me celebrate us every day. <laughs> it should be every day. That's kind of like what I was telling my husband last night. Celebrate me every day. I wanted to show you also that you can pick up a wet brush like this, and then you can start applying and kind of like coloring, kind of like a watercolor. I'm using, this paper is a mixed media paper. So it's, it holds, it can take a little bit of water, you know, but if you're using some water, I always suggest using some watercolor paper. And then you can make some like this, pick up a little bit of those pigment, kind of like those crumbles and create background like that. I can do that with the, this orange also. Okay, this still has some water in them, so you can create some beautiful gradient colors like that. So today in this class, we'll be creating a um, rainbow color. You don't have to have all the colors that I'm gonna be using today. You can create your own rainbow colors for, hey, sometimes I use it with pink and not with red, you know? So if you don't have all these colors, that's okay too. Look at this, it's gorgeous. So easy if you wanna use it for card making, you can do some mixed media, art journaling. And that's what I love about these because they're so versatile. And now we're gonna use it on a canvas. I think we did some classes before where I use it on a fabric and it's just, it's such a joy to work with. Okay, all right, here we go. I am going to actually apply some gesso in this because I'm not sure if I, if this is prepped and prime for me. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that. That's not a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna pour some gesso in here so that I can prepare our canvas. I'm also going to be using some heat tool because you know, since we have very limited time when we're doing all these classes, I wanna make sure that we can, I can work fast. Um, but if you, you can just set it for a little bit and let this gesso um, dry completely. I think I did apply a little bit too much. So if you're gonna use a canvas, why don't you go ahead and do the same thing? Prep it, but if your canvas is already prepped, then you are much better than me because you are, a superstar. <laughs> I think I applied too much just so why? And also when you're working um, with a brush, it would leave some, it would leave some brush strokes, you know, like this. I don't know if the camera is going to pick up, but it's going to leave that. If you don't want any of these brush strokes, you can also use a palette knife or you can just use your finger to smudge everything and then wipe it down. I always have a baby wipes close to me when I'm working like this so that I can just quickly clean it and then I have a dry rag as well or a towel in here. There we go. I think I'm okay with the brush strokes. I love, I've been loving some textures lately, so I don't really mind that. Okay, and we're gonna grab my heat tool. This one is from Ranger. I really, really love this because it's not so loud. Some of the heat tool are super loud and this one is just perfect. <laughs> so here we go. Since this is a canvas, I know there's gonna be no warping in the paper or anything like that. And this gesso will actually just help the um the gelatos to lay down more smoothly and it's easier to blend them also one thing i love doing um when i'm doing some journaling it's really that that quiet moment you know i mean i enjoy doing digital art and traditional art at the same time but there's just something different about getting your fingers dirty and really creating some happy mess. You can't beat that. So I can see that my gesso is drying up, not completely, but we're getting there. Now for the next step, we're going to need some pencil and some eraser. Also, if you have any type of template for a circle template, I'm actually gonna be using my 
vacuum, my tiny little vacuum here that I pick up my eraser dust. This is perfect. If you have a cup, a mug, you know, that you can use, go ahead and grab that for me, please. Now, remember what I'm doing here is, is always the basic because it's gonna be up to you really to add a little bit more. So what you can see in your worksheets today, I have left this side of that um, blank because if you're gonna use this in your journal, you can actually have some journaling thoughts in here. You know, you can add your um, mood, your emotions, whatever it is that you wanna write in there, or you can add some drawings, you know, so that's, that's really up to you. But today we'll focus on the application of our gelatos. And also we'll be doing a little bit of lettering here. And so that's gonna be super fun. All right, so I think this is completely dry. Now I'm going to grab <laughs> my little tiny vacuum here. And I am going to create a circle around here, I think. Not so big. So I might just use, so I'm gonna leave a little part of it hanging a little bit. So, cause it's not gonna be completely circle, almost like, I don't know how I made that so big there. I wonder what I used. <laughs> over here maybe I used a big cup because this one seems tiny but I'm just going to follow along anyways and then when you're sketching make sure to really go lightly so that it will be easier to erase and then so it will be easier to erase it later I'm just going to go follow along this side of that I'm just going to leave it like that okay Right, in this part, you could also use some ruler, but I think what I did was just kind of like follow my gut. This next step, you're gonna need to create five lines and that should leave you six empty spaces. So that's where we're going to put our words of affirmation. So we're gonna need to do five lines. Make sure that you'll have enough space for each of your word, you know? So, and also that's gonna depend on you what kind of words you wanna put in there, or if you don't wanna put words in there, that's fine too. So I'm just kind of like eyeballing things here, right? I didn't have really um, just an exact dimension just because I don't know what kind of notebook you're using or what kind of journal or canvas size that you'll be working with today but I'm gonna add five and here we go. I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, now I have one. So we're just gonna create our race in here. One, two. I'm just going as light as possible and I'm not aiming for perfection. Three. Who knows, I might have an extra ray in here. Four, nope, no extra one. And five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is really tiny. So I'm gonna adjust this one real quick. And don't worry if you can't um, fully erase your pencil because we're gonna cover it up with some colors later. So I'm going to adjust this so I can have like more space down here. All right. How is everyone doing? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I have some five in here. All right. Here we go. Do we have all our lines in there? Okay. I am going to grab my gelatos in here. So I picked, let's talk about all the colors that I picked. Should be in your worksheets also. I'm just gonna take out the caps for now. So for the red, I am using the red cherry and then I have some mango and then I have some margarita mix. <laughs> it sounds really good right now. <laughs> um, and then we have some snow cone. I have raspberry. 
And then this one is a metallic, and this is the satellite. So again, if you don't have these exact colors, you know, it's okay. You can go as close to it if you'd like. I actually have a cotton candy in here, but it's very close to the snow cone. So I don't know. I might just stick with the satellite because I really love the darkness and that sheen of that metallic, even though sometimes it looks weird to have metallic and matte blended, but I don't really mind. And also I'll be using some Mod Podge later to seal everything. So it's okay. All right, and then for this part right here, I think I'm going to color it with some fig color. So very, very light blue. So if you have anything white or anything like cream color, for this, you can use that. If not, we can leave it white like that or use a white, that would be great. So I'm gonna start with the red cherry. What I like to do is, of course, this is going to, again, a personal preference, right? But I'm going to do is apply directly my gelatos. And what I'm gonna try and do is go as softly and really as I can, not applying too much pressure. I'm gonna go zoom in our camera so we can see much better like that. So I'm gonna go apply the gelatos. And what I'm gonna try and do is leave a little bit of a white space in here because we're going to move the pigments from here, from right to left. I mean, from left to right, and then from right to left also until they meet in the middle. And we can have a little bit of natural highlights in the middle. So here, because remember, we'll be using some water brush today. I have a flat brush here. And then this is what I'm gonna use. And I'm just, look at that. The gelato is already moving. Now remember, the more water you use, like what I shared earlier, the more water you use, you're actually diluting the color. So we can, leave it like this, or we can add more layers, again, of the gelatos later. If you want more intensity in there, then we can definitely add more. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that for a little bit. So when I'm doing these strokes, I'm just going as smooth as I can, light as I can, right? Because I don't wanna leave like too much of that mark. Now you can blend this with your finger as well if you don't wanna use some brush. That's fine too. And this time from my right to the left. So in one vertical motion like this, I guess horizontal now because I slanted my canvas. So, but usually I would just go down like this. So use the sides of your flat brush like this. If you're gonna go into the lines to but it's okay because you can blend the colors, they're rainbow colors, so they would go beautifully together. But if you wanna be extra careful, then you can use that side of your brush, All right? Now, I wanna experiment and see what it's going to look like if we use our finger to blend the gelatos. Why not? Let's get a little bit messy and really see. But then I am pulling it too much and I'm not getting a, um, I'm not getting this consistent strokes. So unless I really want to just get smudge it everywhere, but see, it would leave some, some marks like this if you use your finger. So that's why it's much better to use the brush right now because we can create a more consistent look for all these rays. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply, I mean, blend them with a brush again. Use the flat side of the brush. And I feel like I move the pigments around so much when I try to smudge with my fingers. So we're gonna have to definitely apply a little bit more gelatos after this. Now gelatos are waterproof once they are dry. So they're really perfect for layering. If you wanna do layering and mixed media, then you can certainly do that. You have to wait for it till it dries. Um, and then I always like to seal my, my work like this in the end. That's why we're going to use some Mod Podge. If you are happy with the amount of color 
that you have, then you can go ahead and apply your next color, the orange one, this one. I adjusted the brightness of the camera. I think that's much better. You can really see that there's some really bright colors in here. I might go back later and see, but right now we're just gonna move on and use the mango. Oops, what happened there? Here we go. And then just apply it directly. And then we're gonna repeat the same process and I'm gonna leave a little bit of that space in the middle so we can have a natural highlight in there. Apply it into the top. Now it just sounds like I am applying some heavy pressure. I am not. I'm trying to be careful. So I don't use too much of the um too much product unless I know that I really, really want um more pigments in here. But right now I'm happy with that because we can always add more. All right. What I'm doing is I'm dipping the brush and I'm also dabbing it dab the too much excess water in a rag like this. I have a rag if you have a paper towel, you know, so you don't have too much water in here. So you have a more controlled blending when you're blending your paint or you're blending your gelatos. All right, so I'm picking up, picking up and moving the pigments is what we're doing right now. Because if you have too much of that water, then sometimes you can experience some uncontrollably um, blending because you have too much water. So you wanna to avoid too much water so you have much better control, All right? And if you feel like the pigments are not moving enough then that means you need a little bit more water. Here we have it. So here where the two colors are touching, I'm gonna to try and blend as much as I can, the orange and cover up those streaks over there. Okay, I'm gonna go dip and grab more water, and then just dab it so we can have more. And then move around the gelatos. I love working with um, rainbow colors because they just naturally make me so happy. <laughs> I feel like I need more water. So you can see when it's like the pigments are not moving, that's for sure you need more water in there. And you might wanna work a little fast um, when working with the gelatos because they dry. Um, and once they dry, remember you cannot move that layer anymore. So I know it's, it's nice to be relaxed, but also be aware of that one. Don't want it to dry on you and you won't be able to blend it anymore. But if that happens, you can just apply more, <laughs> create another layer and then blend that second layer in there. Here we have it. I'm not sure why I'm not getting too much streak over here. I don't know if it's just the color, but and over here, Grab some more of the pigment. Okay. Right now I'm moving along and I'm going to use the uh, margarita mix. I'm gonna repeat the same process. Enjoy the process guys. And then while you're doing this, I want you to work in your head what kind of words of affirmation that you'd like to put in today's project. You know, when I created the worksheets, I might have different thoughts and different feelings then than I do now. So I might, who knows, I might change some of our, some of my words today. And also while you're creating your rainbows, pre-planning your work is always very important. For example, you understand the space and you understand your spaces, you understand how much um, space you have in each row. It's so kind of like planning, okay, this, this space here is long. I can put in a longer word in here. You know, you can write down a whole sentence if you wish. Right. Just cleaning my brush. 
and I'm dabbing the excess water. And then we're gonna blend. Oh, this is such a beautiful green. It's such a happy green. Um, I don't know if you guys are following me on Instagram, but I have been talking about green and I've been using green color a whole lot. It didn't used to be my favorite, but I used to love like pink colors, like turquoise and teal, mint, you know, more on the pastel side. But lately, the green is really capturing my heart. Gorgeous color. Oops, excuse me, sir. Here we go. I don't know if I just didn't apply enough orange, so. I may have applied lesser than the rest. Okay. This time I'm just kind of like doing a flicking motion also until it you know, uh, it goes up to the middle part. Then the middle part, I want to create a little bit of that highlight. So I'm moving those pigments around and making sure that I have more in here. Here we go. I think just cleaning up a few things. All right, next is our light blue, I'm gonna use some snow cone. Here we go. I'm also make sure, because sometimes I use my gelatos directly into my other pages and I would pick up some colors in there. So make sure you're like, your gelato is clean and you don't have it contaminated with other color. So I'll just use my baby wipes, make sure that everything is clean in here, okay? Alrighty, then it's time to apply. Move here. Also today I'll be using a Pit Artist Pen, the big brush because I have a much bigger surface in here. I know I have a big more space, so that's why. But you can use, you know, a different marker in there, but this is what I'll be working with today. This is that big brush. I love to use this for stamping, mixed media, layering. It's um, waterproof, so this it's archival and also water resistant. So it's super fun to work with. It doesn't bleed through, it's an India ink. So I like using that in my Hobonichi journal as well, my bullet journal. Oop, don't have enough water. All right. Oh, what a pretty, pretty color. That's so lovely. Grab more water in there. So how are you feeling lately? I know it's overwhelming to think about everything that's going on right now. But like what I said earlier, I'm so glad that you're here um, joining us. Taking the time to breathe and be creative. And I think that's what I love about Creativity so much. It's like a perfect, sweet escape. Here we go. That is beautiful. Love it. All right, make sure I'm cleaning my brush thoroughly. Next one, I'll be using some raspberry. All right, I will work on some raspberry. Oops, there was a little bit of water in there. So look at that. It softened the pigment already. 
So this time I have a much smaller space, so I don't need too much product in here. That's good enough. Clean my brush and start blending. There we have it. You know what you can also do is add a little bit of like gold flakes in here or add some metallic shades. If you have some metallic markers, you know, you can make the lines metallic. I mean, it's sky's the limit, guys. Instead of doing some lettering, you can also create some beautiful doodles in here. You know, everything that kind of like reminds you of that color. So for the blue, you know, you can put in some underwater animals or just sea animals in there, or you can add some clouds. You can actually do one thing and then do an affirmation to the next. So I think just have fun. All right. Right there. Okay, last but not the least, I'm going to be using a, this one color is satellite. This is gorgeous, kind of like a, a dark indigo, but in metallic shade. This is really, really beautiful. Oh, Amy, thank you so much. You guys have no idea how much those kind words mean to me. I know it's like, you know, being in social media, it's really hard to <laughs> tell sometimes who's sincere and who's not, but I, I feel you and I feel your heart and I really, truly appreciate it. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for Faber Castell for giving me this opportunity and Michael's, of course, to be here with all of you today doing this. It's, it's nice to have a community, you know, where you can enjoy the same things. All right. Look at this gorgeous color, guys. Oh, beautiful. I feel like I need more. Definitely need more here. Yes. And if you have any more questions about the products that we are using today, you can visit FaberCastell.com. They have a lot of um, information, um, question and um, frequently asked questions in there. But of course, Ms. Krista is um, moderating the chat today, helping you out with any of your questions. And also, if you have any ideas for us for next classes, anything that you'd like to see, um, let us know. You can always message us on social media. You know where to find me on Instagram or Facebook. Please do let me know. I would really, really love that because, you know, sometimes that's the struggle of <laughs> coming up for the next class. What, what can we, what can we do? So here, while it's still wet, I'm actu actually applying a little bit more because I feel like I need more pigments in here. I need more of this beautiful color. So while that's just wet, I'm just applying my gelatos, cleaning up my crumbles. There we go. And then we'll use the same brush again, like that. It's already drying up so well too. It's perfect. I want to work on a class um, on ways how you can um, different types of surfaces. You know, we did some fabric before, but I don't think we've created anything with glass. Um, not sure if we did anything with wood as well. So definitely that's on my list to work on. Here we go. I feel like my brush is just a little too wet. So I'm moving around the pigments a little too much. So I'm not getting a consistent stroke in here, but sometimes perfection is overrated. So you know what? <laughs> We're just gonna leave it like that. It's beautiful anyways. Do it like this. Yeah. I actually have some new sets of gelatos. It's um, 
first time I'm going to try it. It's a iridescent color. So I'm super excited to try those. Okay, I'm just waiting for it to dry. And then lastly, I'm going to apply here. Now look at your, your canvas right now or your page. If you feel like, okay, you know what? I feel like I need to add more colors in here because when it's drying up, you're going to see it changing just a little bit. You know, the colors may not be as saturated as you'd like for it to be, or you feel like, okay, because there's no way you can take out any more of those unless you apply white on top of that to create a little bit of that highlight, you know, in the middle. Um, but definitely it's like everything's dried up. Ooh. So this is the only one I'm waiting for it to dry. So I am a little impatient. <laughs> so I'm going to grab my heat gun. Easter colors, those are fun. For sure, yes. So make sure to check out our next month's classes because we have some fun Easter projects coming up too. I'm not sure if it's already up on michaels.com, but definitely watch out for that. And this is a perfect segue. I would love to invite everybody to join me next week for a premium class. Um, the, I actually printed out a worksheet. So this is going to be blending with the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. So it's going to be super fun and much thorough, really, because if you have some Pit Artist Pens and you struggle a little bit with your blending and how to blend and what colors blend together nicely, uh, we'll be doing some color practice and also learning about some brush lettering as well. So that's next week. That is on the 23rd. We'll make sure to post the link in the chat. So make sure to check it out. Okay, here we go. So Christina asked if you can use a blow dryer. Yes, it might just take a little bit longer because the heat gun is really hot. <laughs> so it's, you have to be careful with it also, but the canvas is taking up the heat great. We don't have any warping, I think, so far, not yet. Okay, Ooh, gorgeous. Now I'm gonna use, I'm gonna color this one first before we actually apply our Mod Podge. I wanna use the Mod Podge and seal it first, simply because I really want a smooth surface. You know, I can letter directly here, but if you're using a brush pen, um, you can ruin the tip of your brush pen. I think I have this one. That's why I think I ordered a new one <laughs> because I probably ruined the surface of that one. So this time I want it as smooth as I can and already also sealing the colors in here. But like what I said, I'm gonna use this fig color in here, this light. So I can also cover up a little bit of that. We have a little bit of mishaps in there. So just to cover it up, just gonna apply it and cover this as well as I can. And then I'll blend it all with water. So here we go. Mm. Fig is such a pretty, kind of like a gray lavender. It, it's so gorgeous. Such a beautiful color. It's like a cool, very cool light lavender color. So pretty, definitely need more water in here. So I think that's the thing when you're using a different medium, whether it's in your crafting or your fine art supply, I think the more you use something, the more you discover ways how to use it and you know, and sometimes you just have to attend classes this way so that we could inspire one another, you know? And if you have any brilliant ideas how you're using your gelatos, we would also love to know that. You know, please do share it in the chat because um, I would love to try some of your techniques too. If you're, you know, using your gelatos, how you want to, how you like using them, where you like using it the most, journaling, card making perhaps. There you go. Um, as you can see, I, I create a little bit of that stroke, like artist um, stroke in here, more painterly 
So just to give it a little bit of character in there. I love it. It's beautiful. Now, like what I said, if you have some metallic markers, you can actually create a bold lines, you know, to really highlight the separation of each ray that you created in here. Um, I think that'll be nice. I'm not sure if I have any of my metallic markers in here. Maybe a gold color will not, will be a nice pop. I have a silver, but I'm going to get up and grab a little bit of my, uh, where's my sets? I think I have a gold. Okay. So Diana is saying she, oh yes, really? Uh, I'm going to do this in my Bible journal that I have water. Never designs like that. Um, okay, and Robin, what is the last one? You think this the color? It's called the fig. It's from the pastel set, pastel set, this one. It's just a beautiful, like lavender, gray lavender color. It's really pretty. Yes, if you have any acrylic markers, actually the paper castell markers there's no shaking needed but it's really the metallic pops so well it's beautiful i have the gold one in here so i think i'm going to use it but i need to dry this one first before i make a mess because it's still a little bit wet and i can see that and sometimes i'm not the most careful crafter maker <laughs> so i make a little bit of um unnecessary mess here we have it isn't that so beautiful gorgeous now i know i didn't use any of them anything to highlight or separate your race but like what i said we can use a little bit of a metallic or you can actually use, just use your big black brush like this and then separate each ray you can use different patterns to you know create the separation maybe here you can create like arrows you can create like dashed lines actually i love the idea of dashed lines i want to try and do that but i want to see how the gold will look so let's see that Oh, this is just absolutely beautiful. You guys have to see it in close up. So I'm going to zoom in the camera. The pop of gold is just absolutely beautiful. I not see it. Come on, camera, pick it up. There we go. That's for sure is so beautiful. This one is called the heart of gold. <laughs> It is the gold color. You can also use the gold one from the Pit Artist. That one is so lovely too. Okay. And there's no pumping or shaking or anything like that. You just use it directly. You can use this on a glass. I used to, I use it this um, holiday so much to personalize a lot of gifts. That turned out so well. Use that gold. Oh, I think a little bit of that is still wet. It's not crazy. And also, if you're using, you haven't sealed this one yet. And that's why I think I'm picking up a little bit of that gelatos in there. So if you have a buildup, all I do is just kind of like scratch it in a piece of paper just to get those build up. So if you don't want to have that, we can seal this one first. There we go, we don't have the buildup anymore. So just use a paper like this and just kind of like start writing in there to get those buildup. I might make different too. I might try to make this into a dash one. Like this. You can create like patterns too make scallops, you know, for your borders, thin dashed lines like this. I think this can, it looks like it's been stitched. Now that I'm looking at it from afar, 
and not super close. It really does look like it's a stitched thing. Uh, Michaela is asking what color will be in the circle or leave it white. Oh, that's what I was talking about earlier. I used the fig color um, for the circle, but you can leave it white. Yes, for sure. That's for sure. Okay, I don't want to, I think my gold pen is giving me some issues. It's a little problematic today. So we're going to do this because I really love this stitched look. So I'm just creating very thin dashed lines. Inconsistent, if, you, <laughs> if I really want to be honest with you. Some are like super thin because I'm using a brush tip. So it depends on the pressure that I'm using when I'm creating those lines. If you apply a little bit of too much pressure, then you'll create a much thicker strokes there. So just, just be careful. Okay, I have naturally heavy hands. If you've known me for a while, then you've heard that a million times already. But this turned out so pretty. I mean, I wasn't expecting uh, doing this dashed lines, but it's so lovely. I got to do it here too. Sorry, gold. I'm going to have to cover you up, but this is beautiful. I love it. You can actually do this if you're doing some Bible journaling, you know, highlight a verse with, you know, the circle part. You can create the part, whether it's in the middle, the bottom, uh, you know, on the upper side of your Bible to highlight a verse that way and create your rainbow rays like that. I think that would be really lovely. Sorry, gold, I'm going to have to cover you up because I really love this stitched look. And isn't that funny how that works when you have like a happy accident this way? Well, Bob Ross said that, but um, it's, it really is true. You create like a little bit of mistake and it turns out that that's exactly what your, your piece of project you're working on actually needs. Look at that. That's just, I love it. It's like, huh, should we try to do a dash here? I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Oh. <laughs> but all right. I really love this. I'm just going to use a like this. I'm going to go over it just real quick just to make sure they dry. I don't want to smudge that black and create a mess. I think that's an unnecessary mess. <laughs> if those smudge with the Mod Podge. So, but usually my pit art is really dry so fast anyways but you heat set anything and then it'll just stay in there but kind of like dab it make sure that we're not going to smudge it because i will be using some mod podge this time okay so with the mod podge they actually came out with that ultra where you can just spray it and seal everything i really need to grab some of those uh, but I am using a satin finish. They come, they have a matte, they have a glossy finish. I just like the satin. I feel like it's a perfect medium, um, happy medium between the glossy and matte. Uh, okay, so here we go. Okay, you can also use some palette knife for this one. So I'm just applying it. It will dry clear. So I know when I first time I use, I'm like, ah, why is it white? <laughs> I was so scared. I thought I was covering up my artwork. I'm like, no, but yeah, it dries clear. So it's okay. You can breathe. It will be okay. There you go. Of course, the thicker you apply, then the longer you have to wait for it to dry unless you have some heat tool, um, you know, then you can most definitely work on that and just dry it with your heat gun. Okay. To avoid some unnecessary accidents here, I feel like I smudged some of my black ones. I am gonna avoid my dashed lines and just concentrate into the middle part and try not to smudge so much. I feel like the sponge is, I probably use this 
last with a Mod Podge too. That's why it's super hard. So I'm just gonna try to avoid my dashed lines. No, absolutely not. It's not necessary to do, ah, look, to do the Mod Podge um, on a paper. No, um, you can just leave it like that and you can go ahead and do your words of affirmation or a little bit of journaling in there if you're doing a, doing this in your journal, then you can most definitely skip this part. Here we go. Sealing your gelatos will also just kind of like help you have a peace of mind that your colors are not going to move eventually. But again, like what I said, once your the gelatos are dry, they are waterproof. And so that's why it's fun to use it for layers like this. All right, thank you, Mod Podge. Do it like this. And now I'm gonna go grab my he got, you can't apply it, make it, because if you don't like any of those harsh marks like that, the brush strokes um, that we created, you can use that palette knife and I think it'll give you a much smoother finish. Now, I don't really mind. It might just take me a little bit to dry this. If you have some areas where you feel like you've missed it might look a little wonky if some are like matte and some are like satin. So just kind of like smudge it and move around that mud podge as well as you can. Don't, if you're using a heat tool also, try not to go so close because it might create some bubbles. Now what I'm doing is I just have a little bit of too much so I'm just using my fingers and really going as slight as I can to smoothen it out. Like this. Here we go. This turned out so well. I'm glad we did that dash line, even though I have a little bit of a happy accidents there. <laughs> I should have waited after I sealed everything before I used my marker. It's okay. Perfection is overrated. Embrace the mess, right? It's hump day today. It's Wednesday. Do you guys have any special plans for the weekend? Looking forward for the weekend. I think my son has a basketball game. Other than that, we don't have a lot of plans. A lot of work, I do. <laughs> but here we go. Is there anyone celebrating their birthday this month? Happy birthday. Today is the first day where I feel like it feels like spring is coming. So it's beautiful today. Spring break this weekend already. Oh my goodness. Yes, my kids are super excited for spring break too. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but we're going to think of something fun. Try to make memories as much as we can. Time is so precious. Here we go. I can see that it's already drying up. And as you can see me, I'm moving around. I'm not concentrating on just one side because I don't want to create bubbles because I am trying to force this Mod Podge to really dry super fast by using this heat tool. So I'm spreading the heat as much as I can. Yes, it does get a little tiring. <laughs> it's like a workout here. I'm gonna switch to my left arm. Whew, there you go. It's my workout for this left too. 
might get big muscles on my right and nothing in my left. So we want to switch hands. Go. I can see that it's drying already. Why did I apply so much here in this light blue one? Look at this. But now this time, when this dry, we'll have a very smooth surface. It will just be perfect for any lettering. I love using this. It's so juicy. It's so inky. Ah, it'll be beautiful. While I'm doing this and while I'm drying, I'm already thinking about the words I want to put in here. Um, you know, thinking that, hey, I have a longer one here. I have short word in here that I can use. But if you're using this in paper, then you might have a little bit more um, teeny tiny um, size, but maybe use the ray to really create um, like a sentence, you know, use it for journaling instead of just one big word, since you have a limited size in there. But if you're using a canvas and you're going to display this, then for sure, like words of affirmation that you like to see, you would like to see every day. I love seeing um, words of affirmation like that or mantra like that. I have it on my phone, my wallpaper. Um, I have it all over my office, you know, some artwork in here that are displayed also in my journal. I think it just helps put you in a very beautiful um, mood. And also it really does help to just kind of like keep you inspired, whatever it is that you're working on some family, career, love life, maybe, <laughs> school, work, you know. But I am a, such a firm believer that, you know, mantras like that are super powerful. I mean, personally, it's, it's um, one of my favorite thing to do is write down, since I love lettering, you know, I take advantage of really writing down beautiful quotes. So every time I would open up my journal, I would see some positive affirmations in there. And it really does help me um, give giving me this mindset and that helps me throughout my day. If you have like goals that you want to put focus on, you know, so those are great ideas to put in your beautiful creation for today. I really did apply a thick, <laughs> a very good amount of Mod Podge in here. If you have like um, some metallic markers, then you can use metallic markers here. If you have some white markers, definitely use that on top of this. But if you're using a paper, just be careful what type of marker you're gonna be using because they might bleed. Um, so, you know, just be mindful of that one. And one thing I dislike that so much, it's like if I worked in a very beautiful gradient background and all of a sudden, you know, I use a marker that's just, oh, it bled through or it just made some mess. It's like, oh, it's heartbreaking sometimes. You worked in this beautiful piece and just in the very end, it ruined, it got ruined. So I can see some spots where there's not any Mod Podge. So that one's like, matte and the other part of it is already super glossy so that's why that's what I was kind of sharing with you earlier to be mindful where that Mod Podge goes and where make sure it touches every surface but it's okay I'm almost there for sure um no it never bleeds for me when I am using um my pit artist pen so would paint pens work for the affirmations for sure yes it will so if you have some acrylic markers those will be um, a good one to use too i'm not sure if those will bleed through with in the surface that you're working on though but normally they don't Christina is asking, will they bleed even with the mod podge this one i'm using a canvas so i'm really not um, worry about that, worried about that. Now, if you Mod Podge your page, I don't think so because you're kind of like sealed that paper already. So that might not bleed through. But if you skip the Mod Podge, then 
it might bleed through because we've already used a lot of water on top of that paper. So, but if you're using a mixed media, a really thick mixed media journal or watercolor paper, then it shouldn't. But if, if you don't mind about having, you know, some bleed through into the next page anyway, so if you're using just one to display, then you don't have to worry about that. I think that's okay. So I can really see where there's a little bit still, it's not dry because I can see it's still white. So I'm just waiting for that to dry while I'm thinking of my words. For sure, family, you know, I want to put here a piece of what's happening right now. Um, and then I'm going to leave this part here blank because I'm going to write down some thoughts in there. And I'll be using some, some bullet tip pens in there, like my Pit Artist 1.5, so I can create a much smaller um, journaling in there. But most of it really is dry. So I can work on this side right here. So when you're using a brush, any type of brush, whether it's from Faber-Castell, it's from Tombow, it's from whatever brand you have. Remember when you're using a brush tip to create those beautiful, bold strokes, thick strokes, that is when you're applying pressure because a brush pen is such a beautiful tool. You can create so much with it. Um, different characters of um, a type of line art, if you know, if you want that thin and thick lines, then understanding how much pressure to apply to create that thick strokes is what's going to give you confidence in creating such beautiful lettering pieces. But you know, most of the time when people think of brush tip, you can just use it for brush lettering. No, really, you can create some bold strokes because this one especially because it has a very large tip. So you use it for print um, lettering, you know? So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch uh, each style of lettering. This one is still a little wet, so I might not be able to use any of this space here, but let's see. So when you're creating brush lettering, like we have some classes in there that you can watch on Michael's and also visit Faber-Castell and on their blog, you'll find a lot of tutorials there as well, but it's all about that thin and thick. If that's what you want is that beautiful brush calligraphy. So every single time I would apply pressure like this, it would create a much thicker stroke. But when I use the tip of the pen and apply some light pressure, I can create very thin like that. Pressure, thick. Light pressure, thin stroke. So if you feel like you're not getting a thin stroke, then you're not going as light as you should be. So that's that was also my problem before because I have heavy, naturally heavy hands. So I feel like I'm going light as much as I can, but it was still not light. So I couldn't really get that thin stroke like this because I'm not going light with my pen. So also remember to use the tip instead of the body. And if you wanna create a bold stroke, then use the body of the pen like this. See how I have it slanted, kind of like a 45 degree angled. And then this time, just the tip to create a thin stroke like that. So my first word is peace. Oop, that is still wet. I can see it white. There we go. My next word, I wanna have, I wanna add a little bit of thickness in there. And then I want to have family in here. So this time I'm going to do a serif style. If you'd like to know about creative lettering, you can watch the replay um, of the creative lettering class that we did. So you can learn about the serif. There were different lettering styles in there, but for sure we're going to create more in the future.
serif only means that you have these tails in your letter, so here, like that. Yeah, I'm gonna skip on this one because it's still a little bit wet in there. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining us today. I know uh, we kind of went over <laughs> our time, but I really appreciate you joining and um, spending time with me. Uh, you have your worksheets. You know, I have some sample words in there. If there are some words that you'd like to copy and maybe use in your project today, if you were creating along with us, would love to see your work. Please do tag us at Faber Castell USA. Um, also, make it with Michael so we can see. I would love to um, see some of your creations for today. This one, I'm just going to add prayers. But this was so much fun. I hope you guys had fun with us. So I'm just going to put in, pray in here. And I'm just going to keep adding and continue this in just a little bit. I'm going to switch my camera just to say goodbye. And thank you again. Um, again, next week on Wednesday, same time, five o'clock Central Standard, we'll be doing some lettering class and we'll be having fun with blending um, because this takes a little bit of time. So make sure to have some snack because we'll be um, spending a lot of time learning about the blending with our pit artist pen. So again, thank you all so much. Thank you everybody for joining. I hope you had fun like me until next time, which is next week. I'll see you again. Bye everyone.